Alisa, can you hear me, please? Alisa, can you hear me? Alisa, can you hear me? Hello. Okay. So, Alisa, can yeah. you hear me? Yes, please. Yeah. Can you repeat your, your question again, please? Uh, yeah. Uh, the text ln, is it like a name of a variable or? Exactly. Yes. Yes. It is a name of a variable. Yes. So, it, they will declare, oh. they will write declare text line as a string. And then, so it's a variable that he will use to, same, same Alisa, like, okay. Alisa, uh, when you um, when you read when you read from uh, an input from a read line, you assign it to a variable or not? But yeah. So, but it, there you use an equal, and then you you write your console read line like this, right? Yes. And then here is your value input, for example. Okay. So here mm -hmm. it's different. Uh, we don't use equal signs and we use input like that. And this is actually the, a function that resembles this. Okay. And the input is actually written here. This is my variable name. So in in pseudocode is slightly different we don't use equal and we don't use the same arrangement like we do in vp uh, pseudocode is not a programming language it's just an english english um, uh, readable words that we use to express our ideas that's why pseudocode would have a lot of versions so if uh, alisa can you follow up ah uh, yes okay so it's not a programming language. And even so, even if you do mistakes, there is no actually, there is no no software that you can use to, to run um, the pseudocode that you have. There, there is nothing official. There is some um, experimental um, compilers for that, but sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it works. Anyhow, just want I want to say to you that programmers use that to ex express their ideas. So, and that's why, like I told you, there is a lot of versions from that. Uh, okay. okay, got it. Did they make sense to you so far? Yeah. Did I manage to answer your question? Yes. Or you still have another question? Mm, is this the way, is this like the way to write it in pseudocode only or yes. like, I don't mean the input output. I mean like the open my file for write and you know close yes, my file. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. This is the this is the official way to do that. Yes. In VB as well. No. No. VB different. I will show you now. In VB, it's different. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. So and and yeah. I also I owe you an explanation that uh, from last time, last time um. So I shared with you a code uh, previously. So, and I already explained to you a bit that there is different exam boards and all the different exam boards actually have um, different, uh, slightly different syntax. So your Cambridge exam is CIE, but there is uh, AQA and EDXL and OCR. It is a different exam boards. Can you see from here? And yes. so th this is a teaching material that we, it's kind of official te uh, teaching material that we use. It's different from the books that reach you, okay? So we are able to choose from the exam board that we have here, because again, e each one of them have a, di a different um, uh, pseudocode uh, uh, text that you use. That's why uh, when I used uh, the pseudocode last time previously, so that that pseudocode, if you can look here, so you see how they look, they they use mm -hmm. they use equal signs here, and they use length. This is an official documentation that we provide. That's why that's why I'm telling you that um, 
pseudo code have different implementation because it's not an official programming language. Each uh, exam board have its mm -hmm. own version. Did I make sense to you so far? Yeah. So you, you, you remember you complained last time that why there is no, uh, when, the, when there is a function linear search, there is no return type here. There is nothing here that define what item is. Can you recall in the previous class? You can't. Alisa, where are you? Hello, Alisa, Alisa, Alisa. Uh, Alisa, hello? can you hear me? Yes. Uh, uh, no, your voice was breaking out. I was about to text you. Okay. Because I tried talking and like it wasn't going Same through, here. I think. Okay, so, okay. Let me try to repeat again. What I'm telling you here, can you recall back, you asked me why your, the function that I shared with you does not have a return type here. And why items and I search item does not have um, a data type? Can you recall that, Alisa? All right. Again, hello. Yes, Alisa. Oh. Uh, wait. Yes. I might try to leave and run again because your voice is really breaking okay. out. I cannot hear. Okay, you do that, please. Okay, give me a minute. Hello. Yes, hello. Can you hear me now? Is it better now? Alisa, 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 can you hello? can you hear me please? Alisa, can you hear me? Wow. Yes. Somehow... Yes, I can hear. Okay. That's, yeah. Uh, is it the internet from your side, uh, or I, can I you need hear to me? check Hello? on my side? Alisa, is it the problem is on your side or my side, from the internet, or you're not sure? Uh, I don't. I don't think it's on my side because like my like bar is like full right now. So are you using um mobile data? Like it doesn't. Uh, yes. Okay. And so I would recommend that you always um, check your speed using that website. So, yeah. So let me see here. So can you use that website to check your speed? Ah, can you yeah, okay. Okay, um, so when you have a problem, then uh, it's better to just check if everything is, is okay. So if you get uh, 17 or even near 20, then you should be- And it seems fine though. It's fine on your side. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so Alisa, what I want to say, just to, uh, to continue the class, um, what I wanted to say is that if you can see the function here, can you see it? <laughs> wow, okay. So I, I would like you to always talk uh, yes. from time to time just to see how it goes. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, so uh, Alisa, do you see there is no return data type here? And also the parameters here does not have data types, even though this is a pseudocode. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, 
you mentioned that question last time when we talked. Can you recall that? Yeah. So what I want to say to you that uh, sometimes the source material that we are using um, for the pseudocode specifically, because it have different versions. This is the official uh, material that I, I teach from. And mm -hmm. sometimes they use slightly different pseudocode from yours. Uh, that is the reason that you saw that there is no here no data type and there is no uh, data types for the parameters. Items should be showing that it is an integer array, but it didn't. Search item should have shown that this is an, an integer, but it didn't, okay? So anyhow, mm -hmm. just I'm, sh I'm sharing with you that I teach from the official material, but because of different exam boards that they have different pseudocode versions. That's that's what I wanted to tell at the end. Uh, Did you catch yeah, what okay. I'm trying to tell you? Yep, I got it. Okay, so we go back to file handling. Okay, so again, this is how to write a file, but if you want to write it in VP, so we have to use something similar to the code here. I and This is two, Two different methods. Focus on this one first, please. So we have to define a, a file handle. This comes from something called stream writer. Okay. So we have stream writer, and for reading, we have stream reader. So you define a line of text. Can you remember? Uh, just now you see text ln that was of type string. This is a declared of type string mm -hmm. in yeah. the pseudocode. So, and then you get the file handle and then you, you write new stream writer and then you pass the stream writer, the text, text file name. Alisa. Mm, this? Yeah. This should come here. So file handle, you define it at a stream writer, and then you write file handle equal new stream writer, and you pass it the file name that you would like to uh, write to. And then when you want to write, you get this variable name, file handle, and you, you say write line, exactly the same when you write console.write line. Okay, and then you pass it the, the information that you want to write inside the file. And then you close the handle. You open up a file for writing. You have to close it afterwards. Alisa. Uh, wait, wait, let me. Uh, what's the IO stream writer? So IO stream writer is actually, um, you can say it is a function. Um, the correct way is to say it's not a function, but I, I don't want to, this is an object offered by vp.net for you mm -hmm. to be able to use it to write um, something to the file system. You have a file system inside your computer to be able to write to it you need an object called stream writer. So if you want to explain, there is no explanation here because um, this is something that you need to memorize. If you want to write, you have to use stream writer. And I will show you uh, now how you can use that. Okay, uh, wait, let me copy finish this. Uh, what is the file handle equal to me? Uh, so it write new and then write stream writer and then it is specify the file name. So new and then actually this is truncated down but it should be all at the same line. This all is one line. Oh, okay, okay, wait. 
it's just not writing new only. It doesn't make any sense. It write equal new IO stream writer and it, it give it the text file name. Um, the file mm -hmm. handle close, it's just straight, it's the same thing as like close file, right? Uh, it, but again, uh, remember that when we talk about close file, this is in, um, in pseudocode. So yeah, yes, it's the same pseudocode. concept, same, same concept. It's like yes. the same concept. Okay. Yes. Same concept. All right. Okay. Good. Um, Okay, uh, let me go through here, please. So, um, since we already talk about uh, writing file, we need to talk about uh, reading a file, reading from a text file. So, here we just uh, output something to the screen. The file contains this line of text. And then we say, open my file, okay, for read. So my file is what is actually a, a, a variable that contain my the name of my file. Same exactly, Alisa, like here. So you see here, this is my file. But this time, uh, so I declare it as a string and then I put the text name inside it. And then I, when I want to read the file, I then I will tell it, uh, open my file for read instead of open my file for write. And then I will do a loop because why? The file typically have a lot of lines or even possibly have a, a line, a line, one line only, right? So I will say instead of write file, I said read file this way. And then I will pass it a variable that this variable, uh, the read file function will put something inside it. So it will go to the file, read the line, store what it reads inside the variable text line. Alisa, you still follow uh, me up with wait. me? I don't get the part where the text thing, like, what do you mean? Which line, Alisa? This one? Yeah. So, OK. Previously, we said write file, right? So we, when you said write file, we you have to pass it something to write, right? But when yeah. you want to read, when you, okay, he, this computer system, what he does, he go to the file in the memory and then, uh, or even to the hard disk, and then he try to read line by line. So when he, re when you give him the instruction read file, so he will go to actually, uh, read the content of the file. So when he read it, he need to store what he reads inside a variable. The variable here, I am giving him a variable named text line. This doesn't uh, work fine with you, I believe. It's confusing you. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, 
I got it. Okay. Uh, let me copy this. I got it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing you. Oh, uh, yeah, I got it. Oh, um, I'm just copying. You're saying anything? No, no, I'm waiting for you to tell me. So, can I continue? Alisa, can you hear me? Alisa, can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Hello, hello? Alisa, can you hear me? Hello, Alisa? Hello? Yes, <laughs> I wonder, I'm just wondering. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, I can hear you. Now, you're done. Are you done? Yes. Okay. So what I want to say here, uh, okay. So if you are done, then we go to um, to do uh, this uh, reading. So we have seen how to read in pseudocode. We need to know how to read in VP. So again, Elisa. Uh, so we define a line of text, and then we open a file handle. But this time, not stream re uh, writer. It is a stream reader. Stream reader. This is an object that we we is offered by VP for us to be able to read files from the hard disk. So how we write? We say file handle exactly same like what we we done in the writing. But here is new I/O stream reader. So both of those are the same. Last time it was stream reader writer. This is stream reader. And we pass it the text file that we want to, the name of the text file that we want to read. Alisa, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. And then after, we, if what we want to read, we store it this way. So file handle dot read line. And then we, what we read, we store it in the line of text. After this, we close. Alisa. Okay. Are you following up? Yes. Uh, let me. Uh, let me copy this. But yes, got it.
So, Alisa, so far, what I have shared with you about read line and write line is actually talking about reading a single line of text and writing a single line of text. But if we want to read multiple lines, we have to modify that code slightly. But of course, this is, we will be following exactly the same structure of this and even the same structure that we have seen on the right. Write line will only write one line of text. Read line will only read one line of text. If we want to read more or write more, we have to use a loop. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, let me finish right there. Are you done? Uh, almost. Okay. Okay. Uh, it only reads one line, right? Yes, and and also the code for writing it only writes one line. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we want to modify that behavior, then we have to slightly modify actually how the code works. So um, look at here, uh, we just want to, we need to add only uh, some kind of loop here. So you see here, this is for, uh, for reading. Uh, I, mm -hmm. will, I will introduce, so this is exactly the line that we have seen, we're just reading a line, okay? But the difference here is that we added do while loop, okay? This is um, in VP, this is in pseudocode. Ah. Okay, so let me focus here in on the VP side because of uh, the exercise I want to give to you. So do until, this is the new thing that we are introducing to you. File handle dot end of stream. Um, end of stream, it means that you reach the end of the file. So um, I don't know how many, how many lines inside the file that I would like to read, but uh, there is always a marker of the end of the file that we don't see with our eyes, but it is um, seen to the programming language like VP. So they have something that we are able to call and use as a condition. So this loop will keep running until it experience and or see something called end of stream. This after inside a file, there will be a lot of text here and they always mark, do a mark. This mark is called end of file. This end of file, we cannot see it with our eyes, but it is visible to the programming language. Do you understand? Yeah. So file handle dot end of stream. File handle, where is it? File handle is the one that we define here. This is the one that we define here as a stream reader. Okay. So we send end, we say end of stream. So this is a condition that we will keep monitoring for. We will, uh, as long as, it's not yet end of stream, then we will keep reading a file. And what, what we will do after reading and storing uh, what we read inside the line of text, we will print it. We will just print it. But in, in some other exercises, we need to use it in some other uh, benefits. We might need to store it in a 2D array, or we even can store it in, a, in, a, in a, just a normal array. It depends on the content. 
Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Wait, uh, I got most of it. But the does that mean, does the read line, like the um, file handle dot read line, does it automatically output or do I have to write like another console dot write line? Here, console dot write line. You oh, can yeah. see my screen, right? Oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't see it. No <laughs> problem. It's okay. Yeah. No, it doesn't automatically output. What it what it does is it just store it in a variable, and then we have to output the, the content of the variable. Okay. Okay, is it clear? So yep. did you write both the pseudocode and the VP or? I wrote both of it. Okay, so uh, Alisa, let me tell you, um, this end of file, EOF, this is short of mm -hmm. end of file, exactly matches file handle dot end of stream. So here in the pseudocode, we open the file for reading. And then we say while not end of file EOF, and we pass it the file name do. So while not end of file do, and this is the end while. And other than that, we still read the file and we put the file name we put the text string is it's actually an empty variable that we would like to load it with the line that we read from the file and then we output it here uh wait wait uh so because in the previous note it was read file and then straight up the name of the variable but does that mean we actually do have to um this is too possible for Matt, uh, lisa so the, f the uh, first format, you are able to use it. The second format, you are able to neglect that and only put a comma the way that he, they do it last time. And then you are able to put the variable that you would like to receive the information in. So both format is actually acceptable. It's official format. Okay, uh, let me copy everything down. Are you done? Yep. Okay. So um let me see here. Uh can I still use the repeat until loop for this? Yes, you're able to use yes. repeat until. Yes. Okay then. Yes. Okay. And um so let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh I wanted to share uh, this here. Give me the code here. Also. Okay. So, Alisa, I would like to introduce a, a few functions to, to uh, give you mm -hmm. adva a slightly advanced exercises uh, for you. So, you see this string? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are able to actually um, define a string like that. And then we are able to use um, a split function. This split function, we pass it a string. This is a string. Actually, it is a pass to a file. And um, we put for it something that it can use it for splitting. So I have here this slash, 
to, to mark different parts of the string. I would like to divide my string based on that uh, slash that I'm having. So every time mm -hmm. it, it experience a slash, it will uh, somehow, mm, how to say? So no, I, let me say, uh, let me rephrase my, my explanation. So this split function will split all the string based on the slashes. So when, so this mark the first uh, portion that it I will get. This will mark the second portion. So everything between or uh, is seeing a slash after it, it will put it uh, in a separate position in an array. So actually parts here, I'm defining an array of strings. So this is an this is my array and it's called parts. And I am having, this is the first position, this is the, uh, sorry, zero first. And then here I will get this T. And I, I am not going to get any slash here anymore in, in my text. Here I am getting users. Mm -hmm. Here I'm getting Sam. So where is the slash? It, it disappears. It is used for cutting the string into an array. So now your string becomes stored in an array using the split function. So you are uh, able uh, also okay. to, to, to split based on a space, on empty space. So if there is no slashes here and we put a space, uh, pearls here like that, and then they put an sp empty space here, and they put mm -hmm. main. So you can replace the slash with a space like that. So it will cut your string based on the spaces between the words. And it will store it for you in an array. Did you get what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, difficult. Uh, I got, no, I think, yeah, I, I got it. Okay. I just don't really know like what's the use of it, but I'm assuming we are going to look at that later. Lah. Yes. So, uh, so you see here, that's, mm, I, I don't think we have too much time, but okay. So this is a part array. This is the for loop that I'm able to use uh, in the part array. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but this is slightly different. So we use um, not um, an index, but I'm using something called, I'm creating a variable called part. And this variable called part, I no need to declare it. And parts here. So for each, this is uh, this is part of the language of VP. I am telling him for every element in part, for every element in the array part, um, assign it to every time you loop, assign one element from the parts array and put it inside part variable and then print for me part so for e mm. for each part in parts okay this is different yeah. from uh, four index equal zero to two no now i don't need to even know how many elements in the array i don't need i just tell him for each so he will find that for me and do it automatically for me that is an excellent thing if you and practice how to use it. So that will give you each element in the array without even counting whatever in the array. You don't need to write any numbers. So ah. I, I just want you to see, this is Albert, uh, Alisa. So you see here, it goes to every element uh, that was stored in parts and it printed uh -huh. for me. So you see here, user, Sam, documents, uh, pearls, main, this is all that was split and stored in the array part. So oh, just by okay. writing that, I was able to print the content of the array so that you can use it with any array, not specifically that, that array. But I'm just showing you, this is how we split and how we are able to print. And that is the final thing that we're going to say today. Okay? Okay. I will increase okay. exercises because there is a long period between today and the next class, okay? Yeah, okay. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.